my God delivers again. Oh, my God delivers again. When it seems like all is lost, he reaches down his hands. That's when all the forces of evil has to flee at his command. You see, just when things look hopeless, my God delivers again. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul and all that is within me. I will bless him at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Fear not, be this, do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. These are words of comfort and praised our God. Morning to everyone. It's a blessed morning. A day which we have never seen before. And a day which we will never see again. Let me, in our Jamaican term, give you a, a mighty ale up this morning. Because God has been good to all of us. The fact that you're alive this morning, the fact that you have the breath of God in you this morning, then there are much to be thankful. So good morning to one and all. We are happy to have you joining us this morning, streaming live from the Spanish Town Tabernacle, streaming live from Greater Portmore, those who are from the Kingston Tabernacle, those who are here in Jamaica and wherever you are across the world at this time, it's a good time to be alive. And so we have much to be thankful for this morning. I'm sure this morning you were looking to see Deacon Kemoy Wright. And rightfully so, today was supposed to be Deacon Kemoy Wright sharing in our time of devotion. But we want to rejoice with him this morning. We want to rejoice with Deacon Wright this morning. Yesterday, his wife gave birth to a bouncing girl baby, Gabrielle. And so this morning, we are thankful for Deacon Wright and his wife. They have given birth to a beautiful girl. And so this morning, duty calls, or other duty calls, I should say. And so this morning is up and about, you know, with his beautiful wife, as they continue to nurture that beautiful soul that God has blessed them with. And so this morning, I'm taking over for Deacon Wright until one day next week, you will see Deacon Kemoy Wright again. But for today, he's attending to his wife. And their new, the new birth, the new life that God has given to them. So we bless God for them. We bless God for that. We bless God um, for that couple. I want to share with us this morning from the book of Luke. I want to share with us this morning on prayer. And I'll be using this time to to share a few things on prayer a very important aspect that the lord showed, um, shared with us he shared a parable of two persons who went up to pray and then i will continue this 
and I will tell you which day we will be coming specifically for a time of prayer and agreement as we all in our home stand on the word of God as we come in agreement on that day. I'll be informing you. But today, turn with me to the book of Luke. St. Luke chapter 18. And verse 9 through to 14. And this is the parable of the Pharisees and the tax collector who went up to pray. Verse 9. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with content. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself pray thus, and this is the Pharisee's prayer. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. I'm not an extortioner, unjust, I'm not an adulterer, or even like that tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithe of all that I get. But the tax collector stand afar off and would not even look up his eye to heaven. But he beat on his breast saying, and this is the prayer of the tax, of the tax collector, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you this, that this man went down to his house justify rather than the other. For everyone who exalt himself will be humbled. But the one who humble himself will be exalted. Here ended the word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us a parable of two men who went up to the temple to pray. So both went at the same time. And both went for the same purpose. So both went up to the temple at the same time to pray and went up to the temple and both went at the same time and both went for the same purpose. Their purpose was to go and to pray. But the Lord draw a sharp contrast between both person prayer. You see, brothers and sisters, prayer is a very important tool in the arsenal of the Christian. The Bible said that we should pray without ceasing. So prayer is a very important tool in the arsenal of the Christian. And so as children of God, prayer is not our last chance. Prayer must be our first choice. Let me say that again. Prayer is not or should not be our last chance. But prayer must be our first choice. The Bible said, and when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray. A prayerless Christian 
is a defeated Christian. So prayer is a very important aspect of the life of the child of God. We must take time out each day to pray. We must take time out to come before God with our offering of prayer. And so here we see in this parable, two men went up to pray. Now let us analyze their prayer a little more closer. And so, he also told them about the parable of one who is trusting in himself. Now, I wanted to listen to this. It says, one of them who prayed, this is a Pharisee, he trusted in himself. Yeah? He trusted in himself that he was a righteous man. Yes. He was a self-righteous man. Secondly, the Bible said this man who went up to pray, this, 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 this Pharisees who went up to pray, he treated others with contempt. With contempt. He treated others with contempt. And so he shared now his prayer. Standing by himself, he prayed, God, I thank you. Listen to prayer. God, I thank you that I am not like them. Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other men. I thank you, Lord, and he, he names of Lord. I thank you that I'm not an extortioner. No, he knows very well. That the, 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 the tax collector who was there, who came to pray also, the tax collector, most of the time the tax collector, they are extortioners. They will extort people monies. And so he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Lord, I'm not an extortioner. I'm not an unjust man. Lord, I'm not even an adulterer. And today, he could have gone further. Today, you and I can go further than he, than what he did. And so he shares in his prayer of what he's not. I'm not like them, Lord. That's not the type of prayer God wants us to pray. A prayer of being a self-righteous prayer. Yes. That's not what God desires as we pray. God don't want us to be self-righteous. He wants us to be God-righteous. And so this man prayed and he speaks to what he's not and he, he told the Lord what he's not. Then he goes on further in verse 12 and he said, I fast twice a day. I fast twice a day. No, this is he's telling God this is in prayer. God, you know, God, I fast twice a day. The Bible said, when you fast, you do not have to tell anyone about your fasting. The Bible said, when you fast, you should wash your face and groom yourself well so that no one would see. So that which you do in private, God will reward you open. We do not have to showcase when we are fasting and praying. Because God already knows the intent of our hearts. Prayer must come from a heart that is pure and clean and upright. And so this man said, Lord, I fast twice a week. Lord, I give tithe of all that I get. So I'm saying, Lord, I, I fast twice a week. Lord, I, I, anything that I get, I, 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 I tithe from Lord. I, I, I'm a tither, Lord. Does God know that about you? For sure. God knows your works. 
And so this prayer is one of a self-righteous prayer. As he begins to declare who is not and begin to, to be you know, I'll be contemptuous against people. Then he begins to pray and tell God what he does. Listen to me. No amount of your good works can impress God. Because if the good works done, including the fasting and the prayer and the giving, if it is done from a heart that it is not pure and upright, then God sees that as only a showpiece. The Pharisees, the Pharisees used prayer as a mean, he was using his prayer as a mean of getting public recognition and not as a spiritual exercise to the glory of God. So he was using this prayer as a public recognition. Lord, you don't see what I do. Lord, you don't see who I am. Lord, um, I am not like them. I'm, 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 I, I, I am not like what they do, Lord. I am not like them. This is what the man pray. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not an unjust man. I'm not an adulterer. Lord, you don't see that I tithe. Lord, I'm a tither. Lord, I fast twice a week. This was a mean of public recognition and not a spiritual exercise to bring glory to God. So God wants us as we as people come to pray that we come not as the Pharisees came, not as he came in the text. God knows already what you have done. The Lord said when you fast Wash your fears, brush your teeth, groom up yourself so that people will not even know that you're fasting. You know, there are some people that you will come across in Christendom. The moment you see them, they will tell you, oh, you know, I'm on one week fasting. I didn't ask you that. And not only that, but there are times I'm not saying you can't share that with person. But you, you can know the motive of the person sometimes as they continue to talk. And so everybody they see is every Christian they come across. Oh, you know, I am on one week fasting and, and you know, and this and that. I'm saying God knows. God knows. And so let us be careful. I'm coming back to... The Pharisees, the, the tax collector prayer. But in Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 9, listen to this. The Lord says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corner that they may be seen of others. So the Lord says, when we pray, there's a way all the hypocrites pray. There's a way all the Pharisees pray. The Lord said, don't be that like hypocrite like them. Because when they pray, they stand in, 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 in place that they can be recognized. Right? They stand on the street corner and everywhere. Places where people can see them that they're, they're praying. The Lord said, don't be like the hypocrite as we pray. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. The God, God says, you know what? Those persons who are doing that and praying that way, God says, you have already have your reward. And what is your reward? The applaud. The applause of men. The applause of men. But verse 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut your door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Is, is, is it that God saying when you are praying all the time, lock up and go in your house and lock? No, there are time for that that you can concentrate. But what the Lord is saying, wherever you are praying, then the motive and the intent must be correct for your prayer. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So whether you tithe or whether you pray according to the scripture that we have looked on, do all to the glory of God. And not to be a demonstration 
of a showpiece to the world. You and I are praying to God. We are not praying to the world. We pray for the world, but not to the world. And so we do not need any recognition of men as God, children, as we pray. Verse 7 says, And when you pray, it didn't say that if, it said, And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrase as the Gentiles do. They think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, and I give you the model prayer. Our Father, chart in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the Lord said, this is, this is how you should pray. It starts off with a recognition of our heavenly Father. Our Father, what in heaven. A prayer of recognition of the sovereignty of the God we serve, who art in heaven. Holy is your name. But that's not the direction I want to go this morning in terms of that particular prayer. And so let us now look at the prayer of the next man, the prayer of the tax collector. The Bible said in verse 13, but the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heavens, but he smote on his breast and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Do you hear the difference in prayer? Father, have mercy upon me, a sinner. The Lord said, I tell you this, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but he who humbled himself will be exalted. This morning I'm talking about prayer. But we are saying to the Christians, the body of Jesus Christ, as we pray, all we are not to pray. Yes, we must come to the Lord in prayer. Prayer is that engine room of strength and energy where we come and tear down stronghold. But the Lord is saying to us then, be careful as we pray. Be careful. Let us do not be like the Pharisees, the hypocrites, how they pray. And he gave a demonstration. But he said, when we pray, we ought to be like the tax collector. He said, Father of mercy, a spirit of humility as we pray. And I thank God that for the, far, the past five weeks, we have been praying. We have been praying as a church. Our leaders, our members, we have been praying. And we are thanking God for the prayer of Honesty that has been coming from our heart over these five weeks. The, 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 the burning desire in our heart as we listen the men and the women of God and the men of God who pray and who have been praying over the life the past five weeks. We have been pouring out our heart in prayer because we believe in prayer and we believe we must do prayer with the right intent and the right heart. And so I encourage us when we pray. Let us be humble to God. Because it is not by might or it's not by power. But it's by spirit, say it, Lord. At this time, let us go into a time of prayer. As you pray with me this morning. This morning, we want to center our prayer a little around a few things. We want to pray for, well, we want to remember our Deacon Kemoy and his wife. This morning, who are giving birth to a beautiful baby girl. We want to pray 
a prayer of thanksgiving. Praise God. We want to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. We want to pray this morning for those who are not feeling well in their bodies. Praise God. We want to pray, send our prayer around a, num a number of believers. And what they are going through at this time. And whatever else the Lord may lay on your heart as you pray. Let us continue to pray for our government. Let us continue to pray for our government. Let us pray. Holy God and Father, we thank you merciful father our god is our eternal refuge and underneath are his everlasting arms we acknowledge your greatness O most i god we acknowledge who you are you are sovereign in all your ways you are mighty in all your acts. Who can be compared to you? Who is likened unto you, O God? From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And we worship and we adore you, Father, because of who you are. We give you glory. Because of who you are, we give you praise. You are our mighty God. You are the sovereign Lord, the Savior of mankind. We praise you because we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image and your likeness. This morning, mighty God, we commit to you, our brothers and sisters, over these five weeks who have joined in prayer each morning, we thank you for their faithfulness. We are fully aware that there are still uh, some who are still struggling to join us each morning. We realize there are challenges with others, with phones and Lord, the Wi-Fi service. We are praying, God, that you will work out everything that we can all join in prayer around the things we are praying for, Lord God. Father, this morning we lift up Deacon Kemai Wright, we lift up his beautiful wife to you. Oh Lord God, we thank you that you have given to them the responsibility of a life. Lord, you have given to them to be good stewards over the life of Gabriel. One day old. To God be the glory. We rejoice, Father, for them. We rejoice for the safe delivery. We rejoice for the nurses and all those, the midwife, those who are around them, who help her to give birth. We thank you. We thank you for the good health of the child. And we pray, mighty God, that they will be home very soon. Give them strength and courage with this new beginning, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I remember also this morning, Lord, as I pray, Sister Santani and her family, we pray for them this morning in a special way as they have gone through that period of accident and they are in the recovery mode even up to this point, we pray that you will continue to be their strength and their guide 
We pray that you will be with them and uphold them with the right hand of your righteousness. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, strengthen Santani at this time and heal her body, her, her aunt and other rest who met in the accident. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Deacon Gary Brown this morning. Oh Lord, I've not been doing well as he ought to. We commend him to the grace of God. May you give him strength like no other. Lord God, there might be other in the Spanish Town Church who are not doing well. We lift them up to you and pray that you will touch the life of those who are not doing well this morning. We pray for the membership of Greater Portmore Tabernacle, Lord. Oh God, we think of our dear sister Garden this morning, who have lost her husband, sister Hyacinth, who have lost her mother just in the last week and a half, two family members of the, the greater Portmore Taba died. Lord Jesus, we pray for those family members, Lord God, that you will be strong in their life, that they will recognize that during this period you are their strength like no other. Mighty God, we pray for strength, Lord God. Others in the greater Portmore Tabernacle, Lord, who need, Lord, your strength this morning. Lord, whatever ache or pains that they might be feeling in their bodies. We will pray for our brother IT this morning, God. And the pains he feels at times in his eyes. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God, you are the balm in Gilead. You are the healer. And we pray that you might heal him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, there might be others this morning in Greater Portmore that I might not know the details. But I pray for every member in Greater Portmore this morning in the name of Jesus God, that you will heal them. Every member at the Kingston Tabernacle, God, who need healing. God, I pray that their spirit, soul, mind, and body will be healed this morning in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for myself, my family too, Lord God. As we have been praying and interceding for others, we know that many times we too will be attacked and come under many different situations. But God, we pray this morning, I lift up my own family to you and thank you for the prayers that has been going up, Lord God, from people near and far. But I just pray this morning that we will be strong and courageous. Heal our bodies, our mind, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I lift up my mother and father who is not doing well. My brother Earl, even with his eyes condition, we pray, mighty God, that you will heal them, Lord God, right there in the United States. Because we know there is no distance in prayer. So this morning we call names this morning of those who need your healing in the name of Jesus. We pray God continually for the healing of the land. The healing of the land, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, as we pray for the healing of the land, because that would be our desire. But we also pray, Lord, as you heal the land, that you will heal the people of the land. Not only physical healing, but we are praying for a spiritual healing at this time throughout the land of Jamaica, across the world, that there will be spiritual healing. Many will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Father, this morning I'm also reminded of Brother Scott's wife and Brother Scott. We pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, be with him, be with his wife. Strengthen her during these moments, Lord God. You are a healer and we know that you still heal, mighty God. And so we pray for the Scott family. Be their encourager even at this time. Father, as we call upon you, we know that you hear and we know that you answer accordingly. Father, we pray this morning for those who are in the hospital, we pray their healing. We pray for our friend, um, Sophia, Lord, her, 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 her mother-in-law, 
in the United States who is in the hospital. We pray for her at this time, Lord God. We pray that you will comfort Sophia and Kanga and the family in the name of Jesus Christ as she suffer with the COVID-19, Lord God, and, and the, the machine that will help her to breathe. Oh, Lord God, we pray that you will be the very breath in her body right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we are praying and we are believing, Lord God, we are believing that you are able to do far more than what we are asking of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, there are many of my friends from my school, Campadon High School. There are many of my friends from the community of Rima where I used to live. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that people will begin to experience healing, deliverance from every type of lifestyle that does not bring you glory and their lives will be transformed for the glory of God. Salvation will come, mighty God. Salvation will come. We pray against every other God's. You are the only true and living God. Jesus Christ is Lord. And you are coming back. You are coming back, Lord. And we are preparing our hearts for your coming. So we come it today in Jamaica land, Lord, as today in St. Catherine will be a time where the people will get the opportunity to go on the road. We pray that good sense will prevail, mighty God. That people will be orderly and decent in, 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 in the public sphere. Wherever they go today, Lord, to do business, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ in Port Moran St. Catherine that good sense will prevail. People will wear their masks. People will do all that they ought to do. And so, God, we give you thanks. And we thank you, Lord, to Jesus. That this, we will begin to see in our country, the slowing down. The slowing down of this virus. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, we are thanking you that you are able to do more than what we are asking of you. And so, Father, we call upon you this morning to have your way. Be glorified, be exalted. Let your will be done now, Father, as we look to you today in prayer. I pray for the Jamaica Evangelistic Mission. Oh, Lord God, a very noble organization that we're a part of. I pray for our chairman, Reverend Fitzroy Thomas. We commit him to you. Our vice chairman, Reverend Jeffrey White and Reverend Rodolph McFarling. Mighty God, we pray for them. We pray, Lord, that you, Lord Jesus, will use them at this period to navigate the organization through this period. All the churches will experience and see, Lord, your blessings upon our lives. To see people's lives being changed and transformed. To see people, Lord God, you know, we, to, to, for us to reach out to the, into the life of many of our people. Oh God, we commit J.E.M. to you and we're thanking you, Lord, that the end, at the end of this, we will be blessed above all things. So thank you, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. We commit the rest of today to you in your hands and we say thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me thank you for joining with us this morning. Let me thank you for this time of prayer that we have had. Let me thank you for joining from the different churches and the different people. We may not have called all the names because our uh, not remember all the names of or we have not gotten the information for all the names but God knows as I pray for the church 
that you and will be a part. You would have experienced the power of God in your life and in your family. So let me thank you for joining with us today. We bless you and I'm thanking you because it makes a world of a difference each morning as the churches join. Thank you very much. I'm so appreciative of you all each morning because you're up with us as we pray. Join us later. Remember, today is Wednesday. And so you have a couple hours well before 7.30 p.m. Tell somebody. Invite somebody. Have you invited somebody since we have been here? Invite somebody tonight. Tell them to join with you in our time of Bible studies tonight. Very important. Yeah? Get somebody to be here with you tonight. All right? I know they're not in your home, but tell them to stream with us or, you know, you live party with somebody. Stream with somebody. Hook up somebody tonight. In our time of Bible study tonight. Not only a Christian, but an unsafe person. And invite some unsafe person to join us tonight, 7.30, as we continue our Bible studies that has been impacting on the life of people, 7.30 p.m. Also, remember tomorrow morning, to join us tomorrow morning in our time of prayer on the word god bless you have a wonderful day with a wonderful god amen